So welcome back to another episode. This is our final installment in the Young Earth Creationism series. And so these are the arguments that actually worked or could work. So we ask this question, is it enough to make a case for Young Earth Creationism? Let's find out together. So here are the arguments that did seem to work. The first idea was that Adam and Eve lived at the beginning of creation. And this came from Mark 10, 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female from Genesis 1, 27. So this could possibly be uh, a good argument for young earth creationism. But we learn that it's not quite the beginning. It was six days later. You know, it wasn't the beginning of the creation, Genesis 1-1 or day one. It still didn't answer these questions. How long were these days? So is this the beginning of the creation of Adam? This still allows for the days to be longer. So although it could fit with young earth creationism, I found it a little ambiguous. You know, if you decide that it is a young earth, this fits in very well. And then we had the idea of the genealogies, Genesis 5 and 11. So what we learn though is that these genealogies most certainly had some gaps in them, but not millions of years of gaps. So, and this only brings us to Adam on day six. It says nothing about the length of days one through five. So this could possibly be a really good case for young earth creationism. If we say that days one through five are literal 24 hour days. So what is the full case then? <laughs> what did we actually learn from all this? You know, so the idea of Adam and Eve lived at the beginning of creation. And we had this idea that how could the plants and animals survive such long periods of darkness? So in other words, you know, if uh, it was long periods or epochs of time, there would be no sunlight. So from Genesis 1, 16 to 19, it said, God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. He made light, you know, didn't say he made sunlight, but it said he made light. So this could have sustained through a long time, like millions or billions of years, but it also could have sustained through a shorter time, you know, just a few days. So again, it's possible this is young earth creationism, but it also seems to be an argument for old earth creationism. And then are we still in the seventh day? Hebrews 4.10, for he who has entered into his rest has himself also rested from his work as God did from his. So it is possible that God is still resting, but the day has ended. And I use the example of I graduated university and I can remember the day. I am still a college graduate, but the day I graduated has stopped. So I found it hard to choose one over the other, you know, but uh, this could be an argument for young earth creationism. But it starts off with an assumption that these are 24 hour days. This doesn't seem to be absolutely from the text, this and only this. Hmm. What about the genealogies of Genesis 5 and 11? Well, on first glance, they seem like a really good case. But um, 
It only brings us to Adam on day six. So it's close enough to the beginning of creation. It's only 24 hour days. But if days one through five are longer periods of time, then it doesn't bring us very close at all. Or we have no idea how close we are. So is this a good argument for young earth creationism? Well, it only brings us to Adam. So possibly, maybe. You know, I'm still totally open. But I found a lot of these arguments to be rather ambiguous. They could be arguments for young earth creationism. But I found they could also be arguments for old earth creationism. So it's kind of a muddle for me. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it's a strong enough case. Is this enough of an argument to stand up to modern science? Maybe. I'm willing to do that. But I found these arguments, again, to be, you know, could be old earth creationism, could be young earth creationism. It just wasn't clear enough to make an absolute definite decision. So I'm still open. There's other arguments that come my way. I will clearly listen. But right now, I think the Bible doesn't teach old earth or young earth. It doesn't say anything at all about the age of the universe or the age of the earth. Unless I bring to the table my presupposition that these are, you know, young earth creationism, literal 24 hour days. If I do that, then the pieces of the puzzle fit together. But if I bring to the table that it could be long periods of time, then the pieces fit together in a different way. I'm just trying to understand scripture. Again, I don't follow people. <laughs> so totally open to either side. I just found this to be rather ambiguous. And that I think is why we're arguing so much. So keep studying. Hope we can keep learning together.